All right, let's talk about how much it costs to put out a song from start to finish. There's a few steps that you have to take in order to put out a song. First, you need a beat, then you need to be able to record the song, then you need to be able to mix the song, master the song, have cover artwork, and then distribute your song. So the first thing that you're gonna need to do is find a producer or learn how to produce yourself. So option one is you could learn how to produce yourself. Now this is gonna take a bit of time to learn. So I would suggest if you're trying to put out music as quickly as possible is two things. First, you can go into beatstars.com, type in the artist name that your music sounds similar to, and up will pop a bunch of beats in that style. You can then lease the beat for 30 bucks is what it usually costs. Plus, a lot of the producers on there have a lot of great deals, like buy two, get one free, buy three, get one free, buy five, get two free, whatever it is that their deals are. You can build up your catalog pretty quickly doing it this way. The second way is you can go onto Instagram and find your favorite independent artists. Go into their Instagram profiles, look for the songs that they've released, and a lot of the time they'll put produced by the producer. You can click on the producer's profile, hit them up, be like, hey, do you have a batch of beats that I could potentially write to? Or a lot of the times what they'll do is they'll have their beat stars, which is the platform where they sell their beats in their profile, which you can click on and then of course see all their music, potentially buy it, and then you have a producer. The third way that you can do it is you can go onto Fiverr, Upwork, or soundbetter.com and there's a lot of producers on here that will be willing to work with you for a fairly low price and you can build a relationship with them and later on down the road, who knows, maybe they become your producer full time. You don't know. Now that we have our producer or our beat, the second thing that we're gonna to need to do is record our music. So there's two ways that we can do this. We can either go into a recording studio or we can build a recording studio of our own. Nowadays, to record in a studio costs a lot and also to record at home does not because the cost of equipment has gone so far down compared to what it used to be. The basics that you're gonna to need to build your studio are a computer, a DAW, which is a digital audio workstation, which is the software that you record the music to, headphones, a microphone, and an audio interface. So a computer is probably gonna be the most costly thing here. Obviously, you can buy really expensive mics. Obviously, you can buy really expensive audio interfaces. But if you're just starting out, I wouldn't recommend doing so. Let's say you have your computer. Let's say you spend like around 100 bucks on headphones. Then you have your microphone. Now there's quite a few options when it comes to microphones. You can even record on your iPhone. The iPhone is surprisingly good when it comes to the quality of the mic. But what I would suggest if you're just starting out is getting a mic something like this, which is the Shure SM7B. This runs at $399. And you're gonna need a cloud lifter as well, which is something like this, which basically just enhances the signal, which also runs at about $150. You're looking at five, 600 bucks for a mic. There's other options. You can get mics online for like a hundred bucks. Go on to sweetwater.com. There's a bunch of different options, but if you want one that's pretty solid, the Shure SM7B is great. In fact, Michael Jackson's Thriller was recorded on that microphone as well as many other songs, like countless other songs that you've heard. It's a dynamic mic, but it sounds great with transients. A lot of hip hop artists use it for that reason because it cuts through the mix really well. So now that you have your recording studio, you're gonna need now a mixing engineer. So mixing is kind of an elusive process. I remember when I first started out, I didn't quite understand it. I thought like, okay, I'm gonna record my music, I'm gonna record my voice, and then it's just gonna sound great. <laughs> it's gonna sound all mixed and polished and whatever. But that's just not the case with mixing music. Mixing takes a ton of time to learn too. It's not an easy thing, especially with vocals. So I would suggest doing if you're just starting out and you're trying to get your music out there as quickly as possible is I would try to find a mixing engineer to help you mix your music. Now, the way that you would do this is you can go onto Instagram, you can find your favorite independent artists and a lot of the time they'll say song mixed by so-and-so, click on the engineer's profile, hit them up, be like, hey, can we work together? I have a bunch of songs that need mixing. What's your rate? And then you can build a relationship with them. Next thing you know, you have an engineer that you're working with on a regular basis. The second way you can do this is you can go into Fiverr, Upwork, or soundbetter.com and type in mixing engineer, and then you will find mixing engineers that are fantastic here. The third way that you can do it is you can go onto YouTube and look up tutorials on how to mix your music yourself, how to mix vocals, what kind of plugins you're gonna need to do so. And this is gonna take time, but if you think about it, if you can learn it, and then you don't need to outsource to a mixing engineer, it'll save you a lot of money and potentially time as well because you can mix whenever you want. Then you're gonna need a mastering engineer. The mastering engineer takes the song that the mixing engineer finished, brings the levels up, changes anything that needs to be changed when it comes to EQ, multiband compression, harmonic saturation, exciters, whatever it is, and it's gonna make it so it's ready to be streamed. The quality is gonna be as best as it possibly can be. There's kind of a golden rule in the industry where you don't want your mixing engineer to be your mastering engineer because you want a new set of ears to listen to the song. I personally mix and master my music because I know how to master and I don't want to wait for somebody else to master it. I can get it done very quickly and I know the sound that I'm trying to go for. So I just personally do it myself and I save a lot of money and time doing it this way. But, but if you don't have that luxury and you don't know how to master, you can also ask your mixing engineer to master the song. A lot of them do know how to master, but if you don't want to do that and you want to have a separate mastering engineer, you can also go onto Upwork, Fiverr, soundbetter.com and you can find a mastering engineer that will be willing to mix your music for a fairly cheap price. Build a relationship with them and next thing you know, you have a mastering engineer. So now that our song is done, we need 
cover art for our song. So I see a lot of artists spending hundreds and hundreds of dollars on each cover art. Take for example someone like Russ who put out 11 mixtapes and then he put out a song a year for two years. Imagine how much that would have cost if he spent over $200 or $100 each artwork and he put out a song a week which is about 56 songs per year. Now let's say you have 100 songs and you have 100 artworks. That's going to be 100 times 100 which is $10,000 of just artworks alone. What I would suggest you do is there's different options that you can do artwork for very cheap. The first being you can go take a photo of yourself. That's a super easy way. I like to do that because it's quick, it's easy, people get to see who I am as a human being. Or what you can do is you can create artwork pretty simply on Photoshop or you can go to canva.com. You can buy a subscription there for about nine to 15 bucks a month. And then what you can do is you can go on, they have, they have a bunch of royalty free assets on there that you can create artworks with and you can get it done quick. You can make it yourself. You're not paying a big fee, 15 bucks a month for as many as you want. And then you have your artwork. So from there, then what we need to do is we need to get our music onto streaming platforms on Apple Music, Spotify, Tidal, Amazon Music, etc. Now the way that you do that is through a DSP. So DSPs are distribution services such as DistroKid, TuneCore, CD Baby, etc. There's a bunch of them. You can go do your own research on each platform. There's a lot that offer different things. For example, TuneCore pays out every week. DistroKid though is like $19.99 a year for as many songs as you want. So there's a lot of different perks for each service. Just do your homework and decide what fits best for you. I personally use TuneCore. I pay a fee every month to upload as many songs as I possibly want. I love TuneCore. It works great. It's fantastic. It gets the music out there quick and you get paid out weekly, which is fantastic. So going back to the beginning, because I produce my music, I record record my music, I mix my music, I master my music, I do my cover artworks and I distribute my music. I'm making the song essentially for free. That means that I'm not going to have a lot of back end expense. Now, if you're just starting out and you're having to pay all this money up front, but you're not making money off of music, it's going to be very hard to sustain that over time because you're most likely going to have to put out a lot of songs in order to see success. So I personally am lucky because I went and learned how to do everything myself. Now, cover arts are free as well for me. Then I had the distribution fee, which is about 20 bucks per year. So I'm paying about $20 per year to release as many songs as I want for from start to finish. Now, I know that's not necessarily realistic for everyone out there. Now, what I would suggest doing though is thinking about each song like an investment. So think about how much you're gonna make from a song. So let's say you have a million streams, $4,000, right? You know that in order to hit a positive on your investment, you're gonna have to spend less than $4,000 if you know that you're gonna get around a million streams on that song. Now, if you're just starting out, it's going to be a different game because you're not going to be really getting any streams in the beginning. So you're going to want to keep the cost as low as possible. But I like to keep my costs as minimal as possible so that I can have the greatest return on my investment because I look at each song like an investment. Think about how you can keep your cost as low as possible in the beginning because we need to think like a business because we are trying to make money from our music, not just do it as a hobby. Keep your costs low up front and then you'll be able to maximize it over time. And then of course, when you start to get streams like real streams, you can then invest more into the creation of your music, which will then lead to even more streams. So so this is how much I spend when it comes to making music. I hope this helps and I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.